All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. Special meeting of the council. Um, that seems to be roll call. Actually, you have uh, all of your councilors by name. We have uh, Councilor Antipas, Councilor Barber, Councilor Grimm, Councilor Morozik, Councilor Nolt, Councilor M uh, Morton, Councilor Perizzotti, Councilor Watson, and yourself, Thank you. Mayor Flux. Chuck, could you read us, Chuck Stevens? Can you read us in the uh, salute the flag? Just start, you know, Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, recognitions, awards, and memorials. We have some presentations tonight. The first is from our local legislators. I think um, Chris and Joe and Heather are here. The big wigs. recognition. First, I would like to say um, I brought you all as counselors that are going to be leaving something from the Senate, um, which is a state of Connecticut pen. So I'll give it to you all for your service for the town of Rotten. And we appreciate your service and hope you will find something to do extra special on your Tuesday nights. <laughs> um, Thank you. Thank you, Heather. So, you're welcome. One more. I didn't get it out of this um, made in China package, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I like this. You can have you this to one. commemorate yeah. your time on the council. So that people are leaving. Did yeah. you say commiserate? Oh, no. <laughs> we have um, a special recognition for a counselor who um, has spent nearly three decades serving the town of. Uh, Groton, and it's an official citation, and I was wondering if Harry Watson could come up to the podium. And it was signed today. We walked it through, and it basically just fell apart. <laughs> sorry. Not made in China, it was made in Harvard. Oh, that just slipped. Yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> that we can see the frame. Don't, don't worry about it. I, um, I can remember giving a speech here one night. The whole time with the microphone like that. So. <laughs> well, this is uh, actually bittersweet for me because Harry was one of the first people that I got to know when I ran for office in 2001. And he um, did doors with me and sort of showed me the ropes. Harry has been um, so well thought of over the years that he's been cross-endorsed by both parties at times. And uh, when we talk about volunteerism for our state and our country, Harry Watson definitely comes to mind. And we wanted to um, give you just a small token of our appreciation. And it's a general assembly citation. Again, it was walked through today because I actually had the number of years incorrect. And uh, it's 27 years. So. It reads, be hereby known to all that the State of Connecticut General Assembly offers its most sincere congratulations to Harry Watson in recognition of your 27 years of service to the town of Groton, serving as counselor and mayor. We also have, want to share our gratitude for the countless hours that you have volunteered in service for the community, and we wish you the best of all in your future endeavors on Tuesday nights. And thank you for your dedication for the town of Groton. And the entire membership extends its very best wishes on this occasion and expresses its hope for your most continued success. And it was signed today by the President Pro Tem, the Speaker of the House, and the Secretary of State, Denise Merrill, and it was put in by the three of us as your legislators. pin for you. I'm all about the pins. Um, and this is a special Senate pin that very few get, and I wanted to be able to give this to you tonight. Well and it's, um, it's a state of Connecticut emblem on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And
And last but not least, I wanted to present you with a state of Connecticut flag that you can fly off your boat when you're fishing on Tuesday nights <laughs> or <laughs> at your house on Tuesday mornings. Um, it's a big one, so you can uh, be reminded of all the service that you've done for our town and for our state. And we are, um, you know, very proud to have worked with you. I am personally and my time. You taught me so much, and um, I look forward to the next things that you're going to do here for the town of Groton. So um, congratulations tonight. Have the Secretary of State once. Okay, so next is uh, Secretary of State's office. Senator Summers. <laughs> Secretary of State. Okay, so Joe and I are here to present on behalf of Denise Merrill um, citations by our Secretary of State. Scott Bates, one of the Deputy Secretaries, uh, was going to be here tonight, but he was called away and he's currently on way to Washington, D.C. to deal with some business um, that's necessary in D.C. So these are for everyone um, who is leaving. On behalf of the Secretary of State, she would like to recognize the timeless dedication to the people of our community um, for your many years of service to the town. So I will pass them out as we have them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're back. And then um, we have one more presentation from the Council. Harriet, for you. Um, Vision Paul? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if you want to do it right here. Very I guess nice. we can do it right here. Sure. I, I guess. Up at the podium? Yeah. Like a podium. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Will we wheel you over there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do that. Sorry. Use your crutch. Go ahead, Harry. I'm going to call you Step and Drag. <clears throat> That's very nice. Hi, Harry. So I'm fortunate enough uh, to have followed you. You're here 27 years, and I've been on for nine years, and you've been a uh, you've been a guiding person, um, a wealth of knowledge, somebody who I turn to. I think everybody turns to um, whenever we have a question. Um, you know, I know that your your uh, contributions to the town go far beyond what you did for council, and that's saying a lot. Um, you know, you substitute teach in town. You um, are, were involved with the Shellfish Commission. There was men, countless things that you that you did that um, makes Groton a better place because you were involved. And uh, we didn't really know, you know, what the what to do because um, we think you'd have a lot of probably Groton stuff, but. We have a plaque here that commemorates um, you on the council from 1990 to 2017. And there's a quote by Thomas Jefferson that, that uh, Deb was in, instrumental in picking out. And it says, in matters of style, swim with the current. In matters of principle, stand like a rock. And we thought that that represented you very well. So. I was thinking about this on the way over here tonight. Um, I realize how long it's been. <clears throat> my wife and I have a 26-year-old daughter that was born my first year on the council. Wow. Um, I can remember town hall being downstairs at the other building down the bottom of the hill. There wasn't Pequonic Plains. We have new schools. City and the town both had part-time health departments way back then. Um, the town didn't own a hatchery. Uh, the Marriott wasn't there. Um, all the things that have changed, um, all for the better. Um, it's been a good ride. Uh, and I have a quote that I'm going to read when I get back up there. Um, I don't like to be outdone sometimes. This is beautiful, Deb, for picking this out. Uh, thank you all, much for all very much for recognizing me. And uh, I guess I'll have my last, last meeting. So thank you.
my wife, who is here, Kim Shepherdson, uh, has lived through all of this. Uh, thank you very much for that. Although, <laughs> all right. Um, next is receipt of citizens' petitions, and uh, this is the portion where. Uh, citizens can make comment. They need to leave it, uh, uh, leave it to five minutes or less, and um, what's being uh, discussed should be pertinent to the town. Um, we have one person signed up, and it's uh, one Kevin Trejo. Kevin Trejo, 536, Hamacasa Road. Let's repeat ourselves. Thank you to all for all your years of service to this town. I know it's bittersweet for some. And Harry, the only thing that's missing tonight is George Edwards for you. <laughs> I'm sure he would have loved to be here right now. I knew George very well. Didn't he get you involved in politics in Groton? <laughs> we'll he actually got that. me to Groton. George Edwards got me to Groton. Yeah. Okay. What I'm actually here about is tonight you're going to be reviewing the appointments committee rules and regulations. I'm having a little problem with the process of what's going on. You have an appointment tonight that you are probably going to approve, and this is not about the person who's going to be approved because I think the person is a very good person, but it's the process that seems strange. October, the seat was filled, yet the person put an application in on October 20th to fill a seat that was marked as filled October 17th. Went to the council appointments beginning of November to be approved to get tonight's approval. Never, no one never knew that I know of. It wasn't on the website, it wasn't posted anywhere that there was a vacancy even. I just got a brand new updated list of a colored list that people understand of expirations and gone over showing the vacancy. So from October 17th, when it was filled, to November 17th, nothing has been posted online or anywhere that a seat was available on this commission. It doesn't look good to me, in my eyes, to the town people when we're looking for people to go on boards and commissions. It seems like someone just got ramrodded in a position instead of having it posted out to the town for people on anywhere, Republicans, Democrats, unaffiliated, to put their name in for a position. So I have a little problem. I mean, the normal steps were done according to the rules properly. It went to a committee. The committee approved it. It went to the appointments. It all got approved. But it never got posted anywhere. That has me concerned. So if you're going to approve a new policy, something's lacking. You know, I can get into more depth, but I'm trying to keep names out of this and everything else, but it's wrong. But it does start in the clerk's office, because everybody has to fill out a application there, and then it's forwarded. So somewhere along the line, something was missed or, over, or overlooked. And I bring this to you on your last night and to any of the new members of the new council now. This process has to be clear and upfront. If not, it's a waste of time. That's all. Thank you. Anybody else like to sign up for citizen petitions? It's Dr. Grenier and then Joe. <coughs> I have to speak quickly because I'm so hot in here. I'm all dressed <laughs> for the football game. Uh, Go Falcons. It's going to start at 15 minutes, but who's counting? Uh, well, I, I just wanted to, I, I actually uh, prepared some comments and then the, the, the COW was canceled, so I realized my, my big moment in the sun was over. So, and then I saw there were citizens' comments, so I figured I'd come and 
Uh, by the way, uh, 496 uh, Noank Road. I always wanted to say that, like I'm a real resident. Uh, <laughs> I, what, I, what I really want to say is I, I wanted to thank the council, this council, for what I consider to be an amazing uh, number of accomplishments that, that have occurred o over the last two years. Uh, we are tomorrow <clears throat> having a meeting uh, to really get going with uh, the building of the new middle school at Groton 2020. W without this council unanimously supporting the Groton 2020 plan, uh, that vision would never take place. Uh, my, my understanding is we're going to start uh, digging in, in May, uh, and this uh, school is going to uh, come uh, it, to fruition, and I cannot be more thankful, and then uh, right on the heels of that, uh, there'll be two other uh, magnet <coughs> elementary schools that, that will uh, accommodate uh, more of our students, and that's a remarkable accomplishment. The, the other thing I want to say, is, especially since uh, uh, Senator Summers and Representative Dela Cruz and Connolly are here, I, I considered myself privileged to be part of Team Groton. Uh, I went to the Capitol twice, at least as part of that team, once with Councilor Nault, and we argued in, in front of the uh, in front of the legislature that uh, Groton was being shortchanged, and then of course we we went to uh, Mayor Flax and I and uh, and John Burt and made a made a strong argument to, to the governor again that uh, Groton was not being treated fairly in the in the whole budget process, and it, it has all you know. Knockwood is uh, uh, so much of that has, has come to fruition, uh, but all of that is is really a reflection of the unbelievable hard work that you, you put in as as uh, citizens of, of this uh, of this community, and, and on on behalf of the, the, the children and the schools and the board of education, I just want to thank you. This was a remarkable two year accomplishment. So thanks thank very you. much, Joe. I was going to echo uh, the superintendent's words. I'm dressed for the football game, too, and I'm melting <laughs> in here. But I'm ready to go. Uh, I, I got elected with you guys a couple of years ago. And, and again, I think uh, I, I thank you guys for everything you've done for me, uh, Mayor Flax. You, everything I went through and our family went through, you guys and, and Deb and, and Harry, you guys supported me 100%. Harry talked to me a bunch of times after saying that uh, I was working my way up and I was improving as a counselor. And he gave me a lot of words of encouragement early. And a lot of stuff I took up to Hartford, I learned from you, and I, I really appreciate everything that you've done and respect you a lot. And I just, I, I couldn't sit here and not say something about all you guys. So I thank you guys for everything you've done, and I did enjoy working with you all those times. And I'm going to go watch Fit, Fitch beat Massac right now. Right on. Hopefully. So let's make that happen. <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks, Joe. Would anybody else like to um, speak during? So we'll go to responses to citizen petitions, comments, and concerns. Anybody? Would like to move the consent calendar? So mm -hmm. moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? That passes nine to zero to zero. <coughs> uh, go to communications. Councilor Antipas? You know, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I do. Well, let's do this. <laughs> Councilor Morton? I have nothing to report. Council Barber? I have nothing to report. Council Terrazani? Um, I'd like to just take a minute. I had written a letter to the editor of the day back in um, October. Apparently it wasn't good enough to be published, but I'd like to take a few moments to read it out loud for anybody who is a voting member of the town of Groton. Uh, my question to start the article was, what is the problem with Groton's government? To all registered voters of Groton within the next month, the Charter Revision Commission will submit their recommendations to the Council. The Council will then have the final say as to whether or not the draft presented will actually go to the voters next year. The town may have an encumbering governmental process, but it's <coughs> one based on checks and balances while representing all districts. The Council and the RTM have reduced town operating expenses by 5.5% in 2017 and 1.6% in 2018. 
Keep in mind that the council only controls one third of the town's budget while the Board of Educa Education controls the remainder. The Board of Education has a state imposed minimum budget requirement that limits their ability to reduce the school budget. So again, I ask what is the problem with Groton's government? The problem is we have a revenue problem. Relying heavily on state funding has been dicey and unreliable. We need to continue focusing on economic development, not restructuring our town government. Build the tax base, streamline our schools, strengthen our community ties between districts, and in doing so, we will create this synergy that will allow our town to grow without dependency on our state revenue. Our town charter is not the problem, revenue is. And I signed it as myself, Groton Town Councilor, Buddington Road. Thank you. Councilor Watson? Um, I, we got a, an email from Natalie Billing about mm -hmm. um, uh, the proposed changes to the personnel appointments and rules. That's all. Okay. Councilor Green? No, I, had, I got the same email and nothing else. Councilor Nolan? I have nothing to report. I attended the sale meeting on the 20th of November and the seat meeting on the, on the, the following Wednesday. Very good. Um, so I just have a, I just want to make a statement before it's, there's no appropriate time to do it since the end of the meeting is an adjournment, there's no new business, but I just wanted to, um, wanted to thank the citizens of Groton for allowing me to serve uh, nine years on the council. Um, it's been my honor to serve. Um, you know, I think that uh, we're going out in a high note and I think that, um, you know, we accomplished quite a bit. Um, as Dr. Grenier said, um, we unanimously, you know, we had the largest school referendum in state history passed um, by this council. Um, we, uh, we created a Charter Revision Commission, which I think was one of the reasons that we got into the, um, the council to begin with two years ago. Um, and I want to, and we're going to talk about it tonight, but I wanted to remind people, it's not whether you like the final revision. You know, there was a commission assembled of Groton residents that re represented every district in the town who spent 15 months working on this document, and depending on tonight's vote, uh, it, should, it may go to the voters to decide, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, we hired a very capable town manager, and uh, I think I heard somebody say uh, once before that we're just doing our job, but we weren't just doing our job. It's hiring a town manager and hiring somebody who can, um, you know, bring this town forward, and um, I think we're leaving with a very, very capable town manager. Um, and we made a commitment to drive economic development um, we hired some new people. John Reiner was hired. Um, Paige Bronk was hired. Um, they've been invaluable. Um, we kept their budget whole so that they could do a few things. Um, as one of the few towns left in Connecticut with a separate planning and zoning, we're working to combine them. Um, and we were developing tax and commit financing districts, which have worked in other towns like Madison, and will help in getting our economic development kicked into gear, especially with electric boats. Um, hopefully the next council will drive economic development as well. I'm sure they will. Um, I also wanted to make sure, I think Deb touched on it, it was, it's understood that town spending was down, board event spending was down, um, but taxes went up and it really had to do with the revenue that was cut from the state legislature in, in um, Hartford. Um, but thanks to the efforts of our state senators, legislators, board of ed chair, city mayor, superintendent of schools, and this council <coughs> was restored. Um, and then finally, I'm hopeful that the incoming council will hold themselves to the same ideals that they were vocal in holding us to. With an entire council of Democrats, they should conduct all business in front of the camera. No backroom caucuses, complete transparency. By law, they can caucus whenever they desire and conduct all town debates in private, but they were again very vocal on making sure that the eight Republicans in charge uh, did not do their business in backroom meetings. And um, I'm hopeful that uh, they'll do what they urged us not to do. So hopefully they'll be, they'll be there. I wanna congratulate the incoming council. Um, it's, it's great, you guys are gonna do great. And, um, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. So that's my communication. Uh, Clerk of the Representative Town Meeting. Thank you. The uh, re uh, Representative Town Meeting will be meeting on December 13th. Um, at the Groton Senior Seven Center at 7.30. This will be their first meeting uh, of the newly elected RTM. So 
uh, the body will adopt <coughs> temporary rules and then they'll elect a moderator and um, they'll also have an opportunity to, uh, if they so choose, to act uh, well, veto only on the ordinance to designate planning and zoning as planning and zoning commission and to abolish the zoning commission. So they have until um, the 27th, I think, of December. It's 45 days from the enact, but when you passed it on the 8th, so that's what they have. Can I ask one question about, is it, can you clarify um, from the election? Mm -hmm. There's supposed to be minority representation in each district. Did, did, did it end up that way that there are, in every district that's there, there is? There's at least one person. But is that with minority? I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I know we have, we have a town attorney's opinion because there was such a question <coughs> on this because our town charter actually speaks about nomination, not about minority representation, even though they call it, the title is minority representation. So it caused um, <coughs> Councilor Antipas and I and um, and a, mem a member elected, a newly elected a member for the RTM to wonder what's going on. So we asked for a town attorney to give a clarification. And it really boils down to our town charter is in violation of state statute. You cannot dictate elections in your charter. It, only your ch only a statute can. So when you have an, uh, a seat of five <coughs> members, you can nominate five members to run. What can get elected is, is determined by minority representation, which is Connecticut general statutes. And so a five-member board, four from one party. You know, we never had this type of situation before, mm -hmm. so this is why uh, we've really <coughs> tested the, uh, the bounds uh, of, of what's, what's right and what's wrong. So going forward, if we don't have an RTM, we won't have to worry about it. So on minority representation, if it was going to be with the council, um, it would be 6-3, correct? Yes. Right. So, how is, so on a five, it's not three two; it's four one. No, it's that's the. It was a real cu curiosity to me too. You'd think it's a two thirds uh, minority representation, and the statute is nearly two thirds, except with a five member board. And it was explained to me by um, Jamie Spallone, who was the deputy secretary of the state at the, when I first became town clerk, because I was just like, how can this be? It must be a mistake. He said, nope, the only reason why we, we were able to pass this legislation at the time in the legislature was because <coughs> uh, we adopted a formula, put that in quotes because there is no formula, mm -hmm. it's just this is the way it is. Uh, a five member board would have four from one party. And he said, because most boards and commissions throughout the state are five member boards. Okay, thank you. And they didn't want to give up their <coughs> yes. super majority. Clerk of the council? Sure. So uh, you read, you've all received the letter from Natalie Billing, um, and I'll read it into the record because she asked me to. Uh, it's addressed to me, Ms. dear Mrs. McCausher, if the council is considering a change to the appointments policy tonight, would you please share this email with them? If the policy is changing and removing the 60-day wait period for applicants to ABCs, which is, uh, you know what ABCs is, who are unaffiliated, perhaps it would be best to take the political parties out of the process for all applications and reappointments. Since applicants are registered with a party to have to be recommended by their party or wait 60 days if the party doesn't act in a timely manner, it actually gives unaffiliated applicants an advantage if they don't have a waiting period. Even with the town committees acting quickly, depending on when the person applies for the ABC, it may be weeks or months or two, a month or two before the town committees meet next. To avoid putting applicants who are registered Republicans or Democrats at a disadvantage is why the 60-day wait for use was adopted as policy by this previous town council. The policy recognizes there is a built-in delay for party affiliation participants, applica applicants, excuse me. The advantage to an unaffiliated applicant only arises when multiple people apply for the same position at about the same time which isn't particularly common, but it does and has happened. If a U and a D and an R apply at the same time without the waiting <coughs> period, the U could be considered and possibly appointed before the D or the R affiliated applicant even has a chance to be considered by the council. If the council objects to the 60-day wait period for U applicants, perhaps the most efficient and most fair process for all applicants and reappointments would be to remove the town committees from the process altogether. 
the Democratic Town Committee has no objection to the Town Committee's being taken out of the process altogether. We would like to still receive copies <coughs> of applications but from de Democrats who apply, please. We would uh, question the rationale for a policy that creates a disadvantage for applicants affiliated with a party. Thank you for your consideration and concern and suggestion. Thank you. Tell also, me. also, something from my office for each of you, which are appreciation certificates, because all of you have, have served more than you know. So uh, from, from November 2011 to 2017. Uh, I served a lot. Yeah. <laughs> You're correct, Dave. Thank you. you actually served more than, more than you know. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I know. Well, I have a who's who list. Thank you. That you have. Yeah, I know. You have some fake ones, too. <laughs> well, no. Well, I can reuse them, right? Thank you. Pleasure working with you. Great. Thank you. Oh, is that Betsy? <laughs> <laughs> Rich gets chipped. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to thank the council for hiring me and bringing me and my family to the community. <laughs> we, we greatly enjoy it. We love this community and it's been a pleasure working with you. You're welcome. That's all I have. All right. Thanks, Jim. Uh, any department heads here? None tonight. Okay. Uh, personal and Appointments Committee. General Monson, is there any? I met us. Great. Okay. Uh, we met on November 8th and we uh, called the order at 630. Um, myself, uh, Council Morton Morasich, and the town manager and town clerk were present. They approved the minutes of October by a 3 to 0 vote. Um, unfinished business. Uh, there was a withdrawal of an application to the Permanent School Building Committee, uh, which solved a dilemma for us uh, uh, because we had four applicants and three openings. Um, and we interviewed the people for those three openings the, uh, the month before. And we were waiting to interview this one person, Bill Robage, and uh, he withdrew. So um, we voted three to zero to. Um, recommend appointing uh, Christina Post, Douglas Manfred, and Jamie Giordano uh, to the Permanent School Building Committee that was unanimous. Um, we had a discussion about the appointment policy and we approved the, the changes that we've been working on for some time um, in a three to zero vote, uh, which also included the, uh, the two forms. There's two forms C and D. We made some changes to that, which were part of the appointment process. And then the, the committee recommended uh, uh, that the council consider uh, three different <coughs> ABCs to keep or remove, which was the Permanent Personnel Appeals Board, Neighborhood Revitalization Zone, and the Fair Rent Commission. Um, new business, John claude Amwaz was interviewed for appointment to the Shellfish Commission. Uh, he did state he didn't belong to any conflicting organizations which is a, a, a new question that we ask, or we have been asking. Uh, we voted unanimously to, uh, to appo uh, recommend appointment. And then there were three reappointments that were recommended three to zero, and they are reappointments to the Permanent School Building Committee. And as you heard tonight, um, that's an important committee right now. They're gonna get rolling. Uh, Robert Austin LaFrance, Michael Doyle, and David Russell. Um, we adjourned at 7.05. That's it. Thank you. Chairman Antipas, no rules? No meeting, no meeting. report. And uh, we have a committee of the whole, so there's nothing to report there. We're going to new business, and we're going to suspend Town Council Rule 7B to consider and act upon 2017-0253, the Charter Revision Commission final report. We received um, a copy of the final report um, from the town clerk last week, I believe it was. And um, this council had the responsibility <coughs> to either accept or reject it um, before our tenure is done. We, uh, we have until the end of the month, and today is the 28th. So, um, 
so that's what we're up against. I have a couple of questions, and John uh, and the attorney, maybe you guys can answer. Um, is, 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 go ahead. Dean. Point of yeah, point of yeah, somebody has to move to suspend the Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. Great. What are you doing? Second. second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. A <laughs> motion. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes nine to zero to zero. Thank you, Constant. Um, so I had received a couple of uh, various resolutions, and I just want to make sure I understand. We either accept it all or reject it all. Is that correct? Like, we can't say we're going to take, we can't, like, say we're going to do that, we want that, we want that. Technically, the statute provides that you can accept in part and reject in part. Um, frankly, with the, the number of items that are in this proposed revision, we would certainly suggest that you be careful in doing that because you can choose to say, oh, this one, this one, this one, this one, not this one, this one, this one, and they might not all mesh in the end. There are, there are a lot of moving parts, and I think on the whole, you know, those moving parts went together. You know, there, there were talks about um, whether there's a referendum or a board of finance or um, moving the, uh, eliminating the RTM, and I, I do think those things sort of went, went together. So while technically you can go through kind of a, a rundown and say, you know, this, 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 this. Um, I think it would be very, very difficult to do so and to be sure, you know, that you weren't missing something or that what remained actually worked together. Okay. And just for clarification before we start our discussion, um, the referendum itself, can we, can it, can we say, um, the first question, eliminate RTM and and uh, have a referendum if that passes then you go or is it again is that I know it, be, it becomes pretty complicated but I think it becomes very complicated technically again t can you have multiple questions you can have multiple questions you know but but again I, I think that would um, it would be very complicated okay I'll open it to the floor to the counselors I would just like to say I feel very strongly that we need to get the charter revision to the voters. The Charter Revision Commission worked very hard, and um, there's only seven RTMs in the state of Connecticut, Fairfield, Greenwich, Darien, Westport, Branford, Waterford, and us out of 169 towns. The only one with a town council and an RTM is Groton. This was meant as a temporary transition away from a real town meeting. The representation is redundant. My husband was on the RTM for two years and chair of the finance for one year, which is a pretty important position on the RTM, and he was never called by anyone in our District 6. Why would he, when anyone can email at any time all nine town councilors or the town manager for answers? I believe we shouldn't make the Board of Finance represented by district, but since there was a tremendous request at the public hearings for this, it is a compromise that I, I could go for. I don't think that we should have a four-year term so we can <clears throat> just leave this off the ballot, and um, I think we should hold it in uh, November of 2018, at the time of a regular election, to keep the costs down. Thank you. Karen? Yes, I will join um, Councillor Nault in supporting sending this to the uh, voters. I really agonized over this decision. There were some things that I would have liked to have seen in the charter revision. Uh, specifically, I would have liked to have seen triggers um, on the <coughs> referendum and also minimum voter turnout. However, I think um, it would only take one um, budget to pass 
that was duly um, influenced by special interest before the voters would wise up and realize that they need to be involved in what goes on in their town. So um, that's not enough incentive for me not to support this. I also feel that having served four years on the RTM, that system is broken. I don't feel that it truly represents um, the, everyone in the town. And I also was very concerned about a statement that I heard repeated numerous times at the public hearings that um, individuals felt that having um, a board of finance would deny representation to city residents. That disturbed me until I looked at the current situation. Right now you have two districts, District 2 and District 3, that um, cover the geographical area assigned to the city. And between those two districts, you have 10 representatives to the RTM. With a total body of 41 people, you currently have 24% of the membership of the RTM is represent city residents. If you have a board of finance comprised of seven members, and again, two members of that seven represent the two areas, the two districts in the city, that representation has been increased to 29% of the total board. So as far as I'm concerned, the argument that um, city residents would be losing Mem uh, representation, I don't think holds water. So I will support sending this to the voters. Diane? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, when we first vetted the volunteers to sit on the Charter Revision Commission, at least one person expressed the, the desire to serve so there would be no changes. At first, when this volunteer was voted in, I thought, that's not a good idea. Why on earth would we choose someone that did not want change? Looking ahead, this was probably the best move we made. By having someone on the commission to challenge, dispute every idea it made the process more in depth. While it may have been at first seen as stalling the process, it actually, it was actually giving more weight to the actual outcome. By questioning and challenging every aspect of the charter, these recommended changes have been dissected and scrutinized, given the ultimate vote to move forward with the change more merit. If I am not mistaken, there were over 100 votes on specific changes of the charter. Is that right, Bob? Well. It was about 100? OK. The majority of the commissioners voted for very specific, excuse me, specific changes after all the dissecting and scrutiny. Kudos to all the commissioners for putting in their due diligence and understanding how important these changes are for our community. community. In closing, I support bringing this charter revision to the voters. Thank you. Greg? Yeah, not to continuously repeat uh, what everybody says. I, too, echo the sentiments of Councillor Morton and Nott and Barber and uh, bringing this forward to the, the voters and let them decide uh, and all the hard work that the commission has done. Um, so I support uh, bringing this to the, the voters. Rich? <clears throat> yeah, I can support bringing this to the, uh, to the members uh, also. My disappointment was the fact that the non-residents can't vote, and I wish that would have been put into the uh, charter, but unfortunately, uh, we lost that battle this time. And uh, I, I just think that uh, the Charter Revision uh, Commission did a wonderful job. I think Bob Frank uh, uh, did a lot of research on it, and he should be uh, given a, a, a credit for the, the work he did and the, yeah, he should be given one of those. And uh, I want to thank all the other members on the Charter Revision Commission who uh, put their time and effort into it and uh, their questions and, and everything else that went into it. And I can support this specifically so it can go to the people. We should have them make the decision. Thank you. Harry? Yeah. I Pretty much Councilor Perizzotti supported how I feel about this. I'm going to vote against it um, in your letter to the editor that never got published. Um, I do have a question for the town attorney. 
That is, um, we vote, you need five votes, right? That's that's the deal here, you need five votes to pass. Yeah, there's five people already are in favor of sending it on, so it's a done deal. But um, what, does the next council have anything that they can do, or do they have to follow this edict put out by this council to put this on the ballot next November? Is it, is it, is it done after, if, if, well, it is going to get voted. Sure, we've actually been asked that question, basically whether or not the incoming council could rescind or mm -hmm. modify no, the decision. My point. And um, after reviewing the statute, our opinion was no, they can't modify that decision because the language in the, statu in the statute is mandatory rather than directory. And in part, you know, you, you're tasked, the, the statute tasks you with making a decision within 15 days of receiving the report. Um, even if you could even think about a rescission, but by the time a new council comes on board, it's outside of that time frame. If we look at that time frame as being mandatory in nature, meaning you're bound by those 15 days, you can't go back and you can't go back and change it. So while there certainly is a, a theory of law and a general premise in the law that um, you know a, a new council or a new legislative body isn't bound by by its predecessor, right. here the statutory framework you know just runs against that. That's so, interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. So th you're saying we can't reconsider this decision? Correct. I'm going to make a resolution if anybody I'm wants more discussion. Dean, do you want to say something? Yeah. <clears throat> a few things. It's uh, one, I understand and appreciate the work and the thought that was put into this. Let's preface my remarks by saying that this was, this was not done in any way, shape, or form lazily or incompetently or anything like that but it is a product of a committee of 11 people. And <clears throat> I, I will say that I think it was a mistake to put people on the commission who came in with an agenda, whether it was pro-referendum or RTM, right or wrong, it's my RTM. I would have preferred something a little more neutral. That said, those positions probably did drive a lot of the discussion and that's not a, necessarily an unhealthy thing. Um, but the law does require not only if we want to, that we establish a commission, but that the commission's product then come to us. And so that to me means we are the second opinion. If you were to get a medical opinion, you didn't like it, you wanted a second opinion, how would you feel if the doctor said, well, the first doctor said, so I'm gonna go along with that one. I think it's our job to consider this independently. Again, appreciating all the work that went in. It's just too important and it's also required by law. I'm not going to touch on every single thing. But it occurs to me, the original Board of Finance was a seven member group. Very well. And then we were concerned because the elimination of the RTM meant no representation whatsoever. And it's funny, different ends of town always think that they're going to wind up on the wrong end of the stick. Um, I wonder what the information actually, the stats actually show historically. But, so then the final report says, all right, all right, seven members, each member to be elected <clears throat> by district. That's because we happen to have seven districts. People here remember when we had nine districts. I remember when we had eight districts. We have seven districts now. We could have six, we could go back to eight. Are we tied to seven districts? The provisions for why we have districts and how we come up with the districts in the draft are stripped. But it does say, well, the council can create districts, basically redistrict as it sees fit. No criteria whatsoever. So how do we come up with these districts, which will exist apparently only to elect members of the Board of Finance on a one-to-one -one basis? And the districts right now are not even, and that's reflected by the representation in the RTM. District 2 has, comes in first place for the lowest number of voters at 2761. District 4 comes in at the top with 44-61, that's a 61% difference. Are each one of those districts gonna have one member on the Board of Finance? Because if so, that's not really truly representative. I know it's always an approximation, but that's pretty stark, I think. Um, also, if the body is to have minority representation, and each party runs somebody in each district, so it's a head-to-head -head in each district, and one party has a great year, like this year, <clears throat> and takes all seven districts. Well, minority representation says, congratulations, only five of you may serve. 
which two of the winners are told they can't take their seats? Can you do it by number of votes? How do you do that when you have different size districts? So I think that there are some mechanical problems with that uh, that we're going to run into. Um, the Board of Finance continues to be in the draft and more or less an advisory uh, body. Uh, which takes us back to why don't we simply appoint, the way we appoint other boards and commissions, a board of finance. You can actually control the qualifications of the people who are on there, and they can advise the, uh, the town council, the town manager, on financial matters regarding the town. Um, let's see. A couple of small things. I'm, I'm a little concerned about the mayor to be removed by six councilors, not eight currently. Town manager to be removed by six, not seven. <coughs> Why do I say that? <coughs> Once you have minority representation, a majority will have six seats. <coughs> well, so basically the majority party could have it as its own agenda, the removal of a mayor, the removal of the town manager. I'm not really so much worried about the mayor as I am about the town manager, uh, which currently requires, um, currently requires seven votes out of the nine. Um, there are some micromanagement uh, provisions that I think are in here. Great ideas. I still think that they're micromanagement, telling the council specifically how, how it should conduct its business. Um, it, these should be, if, if, any, if anything, they should be policies adopted by the council, not enshrined uh, in, a, in a charter. Um, the on the referendum itself, this is, this is kind of the, touch, the, the heart of the whole thing, and let's not kid ourselves. I voted in favor of establishing a commission because I thought that there were some unanswered questions as a, that were, a, arose from the last Charter Revision Commission. And I thought, maybe this is a way to get into those, because some of the accusations, and they were accusations, <coughs> were that, well, something was going on in that commission and my favorite position was not adopted in the new charter, so there was some monkey business. Fine, then let's have a charter revision commission, and we'll, we'll air all that. So that was, my, that was my hope. But I am also aware that one of the reasons, I think one of the chief reasons for putting this thing together, it was a movement on the part of quite a lot of people, was to see whether or not we could adopt a revision having a budget referendum. That was the driver, and having, having Going in with that one, something had to go. And that's the RTM. The Board of Finance, frankly, was an afterthought. I don't say that, that it was slapped together. I'm just saying that the budget referendum was there to take a shot at the RTM. Why? Because the RTM, as it's been said, is dysfunctional. And our system is dysfunctional. And we're a minority system and all of that. And what has been the chief, the chief complaint that I've heard? Because I've sat on the council, not the RTM, you'll forgive me. The chief complaint has been, gosh, every time the town council takes something out, the RTM puts it back in. More rarely, the town council appropriated money that the, town that the RTM then takes out. I don't have 2015 for some reason, but 2018, back to 2010. I have the RTM coming in always, except on one occasion, just under or a lot under the town council's budget. In one instance, in 2014, uh, fiscal year 2014, the uh, RTM added a little less than a couple hundred thousand dollars, probably something the council cut and the RTM put back. So at least going back to 2010, I do not see a pattern of large-scale monkey business. If anything, the large movements have been to remove money the town council appropriated. And if the goal of, the, of a referendum, as I've heard it said, is to make sure that the budget falls more in the line, that is, lower, then I don't see how you can claim that the RTM hasn't been doing that. I guess the request is that it do even more of that. Now, on the issue of the referendum itself, the, the proposition is better that a couple of thousand voters, and remember, we're not even asking, we're not even proposing that there be a minimum participation, and we know darn well it's going to be 10, 12, maybe 15 percent on a good year of people who show up in a May election and then repeatedly show up. You're not going to get the same crowd over and over again if it fails the first time. Fine. In theory, sure, a couple of thousand people has to be better than nine counselors and uh, up to 41 uh, RTM members. Has to be. Except note one thing. Note one thing. 
How many times have we raised issues concerning the flow of information? Are we getting the straight dope from the town manager? Is the Board of Education's um, uh, uh, budget and the format that's understandable? Is the city's budget, when it makes its request for appropriations, is that understandable in a format? Should we have joint meetings between the council and the RTM so that department heads can make a joint presentation? It's all about the flow of information. Why are we so concerned about the flow of information and getting the straight dope and understanding? I'll tell you why. Because this thing is complex. And I don't claim to have superior knowledge over the next guy. But I was elected to do a bunch of things, including do this. I do the work so you don't have to. And how do we know that people are not doing the work? I think this was raised in one of the minority reports, and I'm open to a challenge on this one. How many times has this book, because it costs money to copy, how many times has this book been ordered? How many people come in and buy this? How many people download it? <coughs> download it, OK? So who's looking at this? Who will look at this when there's a budget referendum? I will want to know if this thing actually goes to the voters and is, and, is, and is adopted by the voters. I want to know, when people show up in May, how many people prior to a referendum vote bought or downloaded this, OK? That's what I want to know. I'm not dinging people. I'm, I am not claiming to be superior in any way. I'm simply saying, like I said, we spend the hours so that people don't have to. I myself will not be looking at this thing in detail next year. Why should I? I'm not on the council anymore. I've got other things to do. So, so I don't know what you're going to get when you get a referendum. You're going to get a vote. You're going to get a result. Can I understand what is meant by the process where we keep having a, a repeated referenda that apparently go on open-ended? But don't worry, we'll have an interim budget. And then when the referendum comes in positive, thumbs up on both town and board of education, then we can set the tax rate, the mill, the mill rate. Um, I, just, I just have a problem with this. I have a problem with the fact that currently, I'll back up a second. The council has taken little shots at the RTM. The RTM has taken shots at the council. How come you guys don't do this? How come you guys don't do that? The council has been accused of getting in the weeds. We accuse the RTM, privately, of course, privately. We have accused the RTM of not getting into the weeds enough. Oh, all the work is done at a committee, and then the rest of the RTM rubber stamps it. They don't look at the budget the way we do. So we see the RTM as an oh, by the way, and, and, a, and not a very useful system. Um, but consider, the charter that we have now produces a budget. Doesn't please everybody, that's for sure. Doesn't seem like it pleases anybody. But it produces a budget on time every year in time to get bills out, to get cash in. Because by July and August, we're running out of gas. Unless you'd rather we bank a whole lot of money, which is another topic for tonight, uh, to, to, cover that, to, to cover that. We've got to get tax bills out. The town needs money. Otherwise, the cop's <laughs> paycheck bounces. So the system works currently. It involves three major bodies, the Board of Ed, the Council, and the RTM. And then there's a town manager as well. And people always gripe about differences of opinion. Let there be differences of opinion. There's a reason why there are different authorities in town. Let them have different opinions. Let them have different priorities. We may want to cut something out. Guess what? The law says the RTM gets to put it back in if they want to. Who's more representative of us or the RTM? We don't have to go there. The system sets that up. It's like arguing who's more important, the House of Representatives or the Senate. So I've got problems with the claim that the system is broken. <coughs> the system isn't broken as far as I'm concerned. It can stand improvement. It's far from perfect, and so is this. What people don't like is they don't like some of the products. I don't think we're going to like some of the products if we go to the other system. I think we're introducing problems. We're introducing questions. I think we're going to be here again with another Charter Revision Commission if this is adopted. It easily within the next 10 years as people go, oh my God, what did we do? And I don't have to go into part portions thereof except reject. I am rejecting the entire thing as unworkable. It is not, does not present a distinct improvement in any way over the current charter. 
Would I like to revise the charter some way? Yeah, I would, but not this way. I cannot support this. Thank you, Dean. Did you have anything you wanted to say? Yeah, I just have. Um, my question is either direction. So if, if, the, if this is voted forward, um, does it have to go out to a vote within a certain time? It does. The uh, statute provides for, I believe, 15 months um, after that vote. So it could happen in the next regular election, or you could set a special election. Um, okay, so uh, <laughs> I would say that um, I'm going to be all over the place here because I have a lot of thoughts about this. Um, you know, this is really serious stuff for our town. It is uh, big changes for a big town. I said that a couple of months ago. Um, there's no question that the um, commissioners on the charter worked very hard and put a lot of time into what they were doing. Um, but I'm going to tell it like I see it. I think some of it was personal. I think that um, some of the counselors came in, as other counselors have mentioned, with preconceived notions of what they wanted. And we're looking at it more, um, more for an outcome that they wanted rather than trying to figure out a story and doing what's best for um, the town, although I think that they probably thought they were doing what's best for the town. Um, you know, we, were, we, had, we had mentioned to the, count, to the commissioners a couple of times that there's a lot of stuff, a lot of changes, and a couple of the commissioners came back and said there really isn't that many changes. Um, and there are a lot of changes. And, um, you know, I think that there was an opportunity here for the Charter Commission to come back with um, not as many changes as they did. I think that throwing everything into the pot and having it and, and getting all these things up created a little bit of chaos. And, um, and, you know, we all know that people don't like change. So if we're trying to change the town, doing so by changing a lot of the Charter isn't going to get that accomplished, in my opinion. Um, I think that you know one of the issues with the RTM that uh, was told by the commission, told to us, was brought out several times was their attendance. And um, I just find it, I find it hypocritical that there wasn't a minimum turnout required for a referendum. That you're looking at, you're, you're saying that 40% you know, of the people <coughs> of the RTM or whatever it was that, that didn't show for meetings and then you're looking at, um, at not allowing that there's no minimum voter turnout to vote on the on the on the referendum, and so you're. It, to me, I would I would have to have the same thing. I would have to have some kind of. But one of the things that was a must for me was to have a minimum voter turnout that it couldn't be, 15 percent or 10 percent that it had to be some representation of the town. Um, I think that uh, I I would like to see change. I think that there's um, room for change, whether it be reduce the amount the members of the RTM. Um, but I would agree that adding adding a referendum and keeping the RTM would not have worked. It would have been too much government. Um, I think that along the way, um, the process got a little lost. Again, this is just my opinion, um, that this is something for the entire town, uh, every corner of the town. And um, we have a responsibility to um, govern for the whole town. And so, um, for me, I have said all along that my decision was going to be made on whether I thought it was a first of all it was legal, which we know is legal, um, but that it um, that it was a it was sensible and um, and treated everybody respectfully and uh, didn't give anybody uh, a benefit over another person. Um, and so, for that reason, you know, I I will reject it, but I would encourage the next council to form another commission and to start and try to work it out um, and I would encourage uh, one of the other councillors to to um, who have said that they're going to vote for it to, to rethink their decision because it's a like I said it's serious stuff and it's big changes for a big town and um, and it needs to be a little bit more level-headed um, mm. and uh, you know it just finally Oh, there, there's people on both sides who had said, oh, you know, everybody who came to the public hearing last time was saying don't put it through, but everybody who came to the public hearing on the first meeting, they were all for a referendum. So and you, and you'll find that being up here in the council um, and seeing who, who turns out to public comment and who speaks can vary.
but it often does not represent the whole town. So I'll just give that warning. But um, I can't with good conscience um, support it. But I do appreciate the work that was done on the charter, and I think that um, there's lessons to be learned for the next one. So, Rich? Yeah, I'm gonna pull my vote on this too. So if we can't reconsider this in the next, uh, with the next council, I feel that uh, you know, we should uh, have them at least uh, decide whether or not they wanna have another charter revision commission. Bonnie? I have a question <coughs> for the attorneys. Um, if I make a motion, should the motion include the question? <coughs> no, the motion should not include the questions okay. at this time. Okay. Um, <coughs> I'd like to make a motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to accept the charter revisions recommendation as submitted by the current charter revision commission with the exception of the provision in section 3.3.2 that would change the term of office of town council member from two years to four years. The election shall take place in November 2018 during the federal elections. Do we have a second? Second. So moved. What's that? Is that federal election? Oh, well, election. State election. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Deb, I'm, I'm, I'm back, Deb. Betsy. <laughs> I just, you know, I, maybe this is out of place, but I just couldn't stand it any longer. You know, the RTM uh, is very misunderstood um, by not just the town council, but the RTM themselves. The RTM is actually the most powerful body in the town. They have not only the last say on the budget, but they also can and should enact legislation. They can, they can enact ordinances and resolutions all on their own and make the council act on them. And if the council doesn't act, then there's provisions for what happens, including going to the voters. So that's the most powerful body. And no one, no one knows that <laughs> except the charter. Well, so. I, I, I just want to say, Dean, you were talking earlier and you were saying the whole council when you were talking about some of the things. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think you certainly, some of the things are your opinion. And Betsy, when you're talking about the council not understanding the RTM, I don't think that that's true at all. I think that. I think there well, is an understanding. I just heard yeah, this I, council that, you know, it's like you know I think that the, this council to took great pains to try to come together with the last RTM and try to make, try to work things together more and try to figure out how the budget process could go better. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think, I mean. It's just, but it's not their only job. It's, understood. That's all they ever do. So. so, Diane? I just want to say after the long and hard work that they did, I think it's only right that it goes to the voters. And if the voters turn it down, then they can revisit it again. That's just okay. how I feel. Any other comments? We have a motion and a second. Oh, go ahead, um, I read. I read my article earlier. I don't really have much more beyond that. Um, I have always said from the very beginning where I stood on this. Um, I have to agree and reiterate as far as what Mayor Flack said. Changing our government is a serious decision to make. I cannot say that strongly enough. So with that being said, I still hope that people make the right choices for our town when you make this vote. Harry? Yeah, I'm just kind of, I'm an RTM fan. I mean, maybe reduce the size of it, um, but um, there's only so many RTMs in the state of Connecticut, I've heard from one counselor, but there's only one Groton in the state of Connecticut, too. And Groton is such a diverse com community. Um, I'm really afraid if we change things with, to what's proposed, that one or two of those communities or three of them might get left out in the whole process when it comes to when it comes to government and budgets and all that sort of stuff. So um, I just want to say that we are a very unique community. We're very diverse. And, um, and, and with the RTM system that we have, at least everybody has their say and their representative, and they can bring that to the RTM. So, and the RTM is very important. So. Thank you. All right, seeing no other discussion, 
All those in favor? That's the motion. The motion is to pass the document as presented, with but the exception with of the exception of the four-year term for councilors. Okay. And the election in November 2018. Yeah. Are we good? Okay. All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? So that fails. Four to five. Okay. Um, I think we're done there. We move on to 2016-0149, review of the town council appointment policy. Um, <coughs> Harry, do you want to? Yeah, let me read the resolution. Um, oh, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you reading a resolution related to the charter? Or? Oh, we have to. So okay, hold I'm on. I'm just concerned that the, typically this body acts by Project, <coughs> right? resolution. Okay. So okay. I, I would just suggest... Okay. That now that you have the, the motions, uh, um, um, that you act in your normal resolution rejecting in total the proposed amendments to the charter. Whereas on November 16, 2017, the Charter Revision Commission submitted to the Town Council its final report with proposed amendments to the Town Charter. And whereas the Town Council has reviewed and considered the proposed amendments to the Town Charter, and per Connecticut General Statute 7 91. 9D must approve or reject proposed amendments in total or in part and is hereby resolved that the town council rejects in total the proposed amendments to the town charter. I so move. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? That passes five to four. We're good. Uh, Harry, can move on to the next one. Okay. Are you doing uh, uh, two, I'm sorry, 2015 next? We are doing 0149. It's the next thing on the agenda. Order. <coughs> you with me? Yeah, I have a goofy agenda. Okay. Okay. It's a resolution approving a revised town council appointment policy for boards and commissions. Whereas the town council appointments policy was last revised effective March 17, 2015, and whereas the personnel appointments committee and committee of the whole of the town council have considered a revision to the policy, now therefore be it resolved that the town council adopts the town council appointments policy as attached, uh, said policy to be effective immediately. I so move. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Harry? Uh, I know that we got a communication from, from uh, Ms. Billing, um, I think we work pretty hard. I think what is proposed here is better than what we had before. Um, I think it's, it's worthy of passing the way it is, and uh, maybe the next council can consider changing it again, but I think we've made positive <coughs> progress towards a good policy. So I think we should vote for it and pass it. Okay, thank you. Bonnie? I have a question about the points that Kevin Trejo brought up. Could you comment on that? Because I don't um, really understand what happened. I don't have all the numbers, dates, and everything. That, 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 that concerns the appointment of one particular person to, that was recommended by our committee. Um, I don't have all the dates in front of me, whether they're, I'm not sure exactly how to answer that question. We're, we're, we're passing a policy here, whether that appointment fits the old policy or the new policy, I think is a separate issue. Well, is this new policy going to present an issue with something like that falling through the cracks? No, I think it addressed uh, a little bit more fairness for unaffiliates to, 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 to become members of boards and commissions. That was specifically. And there's some other things we've changed. We've changed in the, um, for instance, we're asking for comments from the chairperson for a reappointment. And we've also added something about whether a person belongs to a, um, a conflicting other organization for whatever, whatever. but I, I think it was mostly to try to make it more fair. So unaffiliates don't sit around so long waiting to get appointed. Um, and I always go to, I, I've been saying this right along, but the most important pop statement in the entire policy is under 4.2.1, and I've circled it, 
is uh, the job of the committee is to appoint the most qualified citizens. Um, so I, I think that it, it's separate, and I think we're going to probably talk about that after fun. Yeah. Anybody else? Dean? Yeah, I said it the last time. I'll reiterate it, and I think it was in uh, Natalie, Natalie's letter as well, which is that even though I wear the party hat, party chair, I always had a problem with making people who happen to check one box or the other on their voter registration uh, cards, uh, running them through the uh, through the committees. I think people should have a choice of either saying, "Yeah, I want the I want the party's um, imprimatur," or not, um, rather than making it a fixed uh, uh, fixed feature of our appointments process. I, I, I think what we're saying <coughs> is if an unaffiliate applies for a board of commission through the town clerk that they don't go through the committees the process is the committees are informed yeah we got somebody that has applied for this and oh by the way they happen to be an unaffiliate but um that, that's all right that that, that that that's what we have in here is that correct betsy right. yeah and, I, and i'm not against i'm not against the steps taken mm -hmm. in this in this revision not at all just say in the future i personally don't speak for the party. We haven't taken a vote on this. I personally have a problem with that. That's all. Yeah. The, the only other comment I wanted to make, because through experience, it seemed as though in some cases, by the time um, <coughs> the two parties submitted their recommendations, it was almost to the point where the unaffiliated were waiting almost 90 days just to get in front of us. So that's kind of where we were trying to find a balance of, you know, here, give the parties their 60 days, the unaffiliates have their 60 days. In those 60 days, you know, they have the opportunity to come in front of us. That's kind of where we were noticing at times 90 days was a really long time to find somebody qualified who wants to volunteer, who wants to be part of our, our system. And you know that's where we were kind of like, how can we find a balance in between the two? We weren't necessarily thinking one way or another, like, oh, we are trying to take something away from the parties by moving these people forward. Yes, I can see um, Ms. Billings' point. Just means, you know, obviously, what's coming out of the clerk's office has to be, you know, pretty on time and, you know, making sure that that stuff gets to the, the right council and the right um, people at the right timing. But, um, but that was really kind of where we were trying to determine a, a better place so that the unaffiliates <coughs> didn't have to wait 90 days in some cases to actually just get heard. And then it would be another 30 days before they'd actually get approved through the council. So. It just seemed extremely long at one point. Karen? I, I think uh, one of the issues here that uh, Mr. Trejo spoke to um, when he addressed us was I think you have a situation where the town clerk is probably the one person who knows up to current minute who is in positions, who's resigned, what positions are open. And I think administratively you get some lag time between when we update what's on um, the town's website so I think the issue is I I think that the concern is that there needs to be some way to get the information out when there are vacancies that become available there needs to be some way to let the public know otherwise the perception is that there are <coughs> applications coming in for positions that not everybody knew was e are even open. So I think that it's more of a case of we have to just make sure that we get, you know, as, as much information accurately portrayed on the town's website. Rich. Yeah, I, I think that that uh, situation was one in very in, in a lot that we developed that we uh, processed mm -hmm. and if, if one fell through the crack, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And I think that both the town clerk and the new appointments committee will look into this to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And I, I don't think it's the fault of uh, the procedures that we've, we had, because I think we, we 
pretty okay. much nailed those down good. Mm -hmm. It's just that things fall through the crack and you know, these things happen. And it happened only, only once in, in a while. So mm -hmm. I, I think we all did a good job and we ought to commend the clerk for the fine record that she keeps in maintaining this, uh, these uh, positions. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes nine to zero to zero. Just um, in regards to this, we actually have a new form. So just we want to make sure that the form is pretty important <coughs> process learning tool. We just make sure that the right people get those new forms and use them. It just makes our process a little bit easier when you're interviewing. Greg, can you do 2017-0215? Uh, sure. Resolution authorizing the town of Grotto to enter into a mutual police assistant compact with participating municipalities. Whereas section 7-277A of the Connecticut General Statutes authorize municipalities to enter into agreements for mutual assistance whenever a chief executive officer of a participating municipality or his or her designee determines it is necessary in order to protect the safety and well-being of his or her municipality and whereas the participating municipalities must meet the terms of the signed compact when requesting the outside assistance of personnel and equipment. Now therefore it be resolved that the town manager, John Burke, is authorized to enter into this mutual police assistant compact with other participating municipalities. I so move. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? Seeing that all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes eight to zero to zero. Um, John, should we go to um, FYE 2018 budget discussion so Cindy doesn't have to stay all night? Sure. All right, why don't we do that? So we're going to go to. <coughs> 2017-0263 FYE 2018 budget discussion. And this is a resolution concerning FYE 2018 excess state revenue. Um, <coughs> Bonnie, you want to read that one? Resolution concerning FYE 2018 excess state revenue. Whereas the uh, adopted at fiscal year uh, ending uh, 2018 budget included a $5 million reduction in anticipated state education cost sharing revenue. And whereas the final adopted state budget did not reduce ECS funding and it is anticipated that additional state revenue will be received in fiscal year 2018. Now therefore it be resolved that the town council agrees to put anticipated uh, fiscal year 2018 excess state re revenue of five million seven hundred and sixty two thousand in the general fund so move second. we have a motion in a second <clears throat> so um, John I know that we agreed to put it all into the general fund right. but I thought we had also agreed to change wording thank you change wording to have them have the general fund reflect at least an 11 11 percent yeah and that's what that's that, that first resolution. resolution has it going to 11 percent the next one would actually yeah. deposit the money the policy would be changed by the policy would be changed by the first resolution that, oh, oh i see oh, okay okay gotcha <coughs> Go ahead, Basically, we're just saying where we're depositing the money for the time being. And when we talk about it on the debt policy, that's how we would distribute it. Mm -hmm. uh, but but we got we got to put it in our accounts, basically, what this resolution is about. Is that correct? The first one sets the policy, and the second one would dictate where the money goes. Mm -hmm. Is there, do we, have to, we don't have to do it in a certain order, do we? No. Yeah. Okay. So uh, do you want to comment on this at all? I just want to comment that as the money stands from the state now, I'm comfortable with the 11%, but if there's anything goes on worse with the state budget and they do come back at us, my preference would be to have flexibility and go with the 10%. It's hard to predict what will happen. So okay. For flexibility, I prefer the 10%. It's still making an improvement. Okay. And, and that's the other resolution. That's the other resolution. In terms of money, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Great. I mean, I think 
you might always feel that way. I mean, if, if your goal is 15%, I mean, I think time now is to start marching toward that. So we should set it at 11. So we're talking, Harry? We're, we're talking about the next resolution now, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. I'm, okay. I'm adding them both together. I'm fine with the money <coughs> going all in there. So this, this particular resolution where that was stated and seconded is just stating that the money would be deposited into the general fund. Mm -hmm. right. I'm comfortable with that. Right. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? That passes uh, 9 to 0 to 0. Let's go to 2017-0273. Uh, uh, Rich, can you read that one, please? 2017-0273, Debt Policy and Management Fiscal Practices. Resolution increasing the general fund's unassigned fund balance, whereas the adopted FYE 2018 budget included a $5 million reduction in anticipated state education cost sharing ES, ECS revenue, and whereas the final adopted state budget did not reduce the ECS funding, and it is anticipated that additional state revenue will be received in <coughs> fiscal year 2018, and the fund balance is expected to increase at year end, and whereas the town's debt policy and management fiscal practices read that the town shall maintain an unassigned general fund reserve maintained in an amount equal to at least seven and three quarters percent of annual general fund expenditures, and whereas the town and the AA2 bond rating from Moody's Investment Service and the town's unassigned fund balance percentage is below the medium 13.6 and the mean 15% of the AA2 Connecticut municipalities, and whereas due to the anticipated increase in revenue and increase in fund balance for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018, now therefore be it resolved that the town council amends its debt policy and management fiscal practices and increases the general fund fund's unassigned fund balance to the amount equal to at least 11% with a gradual increase to a minimum of 15% of the annual general fund expenditures I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. So uh, John, you've expressed that you would prefer it to be 10%. As, as they stand, I'm comfortable with 11 if the state, if nothing happened, but for flexibility, what I hate to do is set it to 11 and find out the state's gonna pull any money back during the year and then it would not look good for our bond rating to have to readdress that policy and reduce them up to 10%. Okay. My question is, what's that 1%? How much money are we talking? Uh, it's a little over a million, 1.1, 1.2, 1. 1. 1. 1. somewhere in there. It's about 1.1, 1.2 million. Right. Isn't the, um, <laughs> like with the, if, with the amount of money we're depositing in there, Excuse me, knowing that we have to put one point, we may have to give the schools back, or the new council may have to give the schools back 1.6 million. Mm -hmm. It still leaves you a $300,000 padding to the 11 percent. Is that correct? <coughs> and yeah, so. great. Yeah, and, and uh, I guess with the similar communities having 15 percent uh, for that bond rating. I think I, I saw somewhere, I think Cindy wrote that if we do get one downgrade, one level downgrade, it's worth about $2 million in our new school funding project. No, so closer to four. Pardon me? It should be closer to four. Yeah, closer to closer four. To four million. Closer to four million. So I think it is important to try to move toward, you know, what other communities have. Gary? Yeah, I'm just going to the 10, because I need to understand this completely before I vote one way or the other. Um, how does that, does that lock the next council's uh, possibilities? I mean, I don't know whether we, we need to. Does that does that money put away and locked up? Is that no, no, saying? no. It's just more appearance sake that if you set it to eleven and for some reason something happens at the state and you have to reduce it to ten, you can do it. It just uh, doesn't look great to the. <coughs> so what my, my point is is this one point five, one point eight million, whatever the the money that may or may not we may or may not be obligated to give to the Board of Education. Does that put this money in a drawer? We can't do that, or the next council can't do that? No. Yeah, but, but, but it'll be, there's plenty of money there for the school one, and, and it sounds pretty set that we're gonna have to probably do the 1.6 from all indications. I don't wanna... either, way, either way, that's safe. Okay. And that'll be dictated by law, too. That MBR should be out this week. 
saying that. Okay. Okay, so 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 that issue can be resolved depending on whatever comes out of either way, yeah. Hartford or mm -hmm. whatever else. And your proposal is is to, is to is to go to ten instead of um, eleven here, which is whatever it is, one point one, one point two million dollars. Only because I don't trust the state. <laughs> No, I can 11, as things stand, 11 should be fine, but you know, I'd like I to said, have a little flexibility. I said it's not going to gain us that much with Moody's for the for the 10 versus the 11. It's the, putting the money in the fund balance that's the more important piece. Yeah, I've seen the document that Cindy's office puts together for these bond rating agencies, and you know they look at grand list growth and, or not and, and all these other indicators, I suppose. Um, I can remember when we first started this, and. I got my plaque to show that I'm a historian, I guess. But um, we started this whole show with a 5%. Uh, back when Jane Dauphin was mayor, the policy was written way back in the 90s. Or, um, so, and, and I've always been a proponent of, of pushing it up because if you were to say $4 million bucks on the bottom of money for school, it's crazy not to do it. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Bonnie? <clears throat> so you would <clears throat> rather we make a modification to this uh, Resolution and ten, but you still want to, to increase to fifteen if we can. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, we definitely want to get to fifteen. Right. It's right the limit. Harry? I'd like to make an amendment that we change the eleven percent to ten percent. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Discussion, Dean. So, eleven to ten is a precaution. Right. And because if we, for some reason, something happens that the state would have to reduce it, right. that would hurt us more and have to change it back. Well, it doesn't help us that much. I mean, obviously, it's just good practice to increase it, but it doesn't help us with the Moody's rating that much. Right. So, but 10 to 9 is being even more careful. But mm -hmm. 9 to 8 is even more careful. Now, <laughs> the state and what they've given their track record, almost anything is possible. If you wanted to be really, really, really careful, <coughs> you wouldn't adopt any policy like this at all. So I'm not in favor of budgeting. It takes, uh, it's a Herculean effort to get where we are. We've, we've got hot iron, let's bang on it as hard as possible, get this thing into shape um, for the 11%. You're not gonna get this other opportunity, notwithstanding the resolution that says we're gonna go up to 15. Let's grab the 11 while we can. Anybody else? Good. Dean, I'm gonna miss your analogies. <laughs> I love them every time. I look forward to it every time you iron in the state crown on it. Yes, I still agree with the 11. Me too. Truly. I, I just do. All right. We do might we not get this opportunity again. Proposal out there. Um, what's up? Your amendment first. Yeah, yeah, amendment. Right, 10. The amendment <coughs> to 10. All those in favor of changing as amended to 10, raise your hand. Join the Mick O'Byrne Club. If you remember him. <laughs> Opposed. That, so that fails um, eight to one. One day. So we we'll go to the uh, the referral as read. Any other discussion on that? All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed. That passes nine to zero to zero. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you. Thanks for all you do. Pleasure working with you. And all of you. Said it last time. It's a pleasure working with all of you. I mean. I was a new finance director, and you all helped me as much as I hope I helped you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go to 2017 0248. Um, Resolution to authorize animal control officer and her assistance to charge certain fees be resolved by the town council of the town of Groton that in addition to fees and costs, the amounts of which are set by the Connecticut General Statute, the town of Groton animal animal control officer and her assistants may impose fees and recover costs as follows. A, redemption fee, 15 per day per animal. Storage fee, 15 day per animal or 25 per day per animal if the animal is a horse or lar large livestock. C, quarantine fee, same as B. Newspaper ad fee, $25 to be collected only from animal's owner upon his or her reclaiming the animal. <coughs> e, owner sign over fee of $50 per animal. I so move. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing that all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 9 to 0 to 0. Diane, you take 0249. Sure. 
Uh, authorization for police department to collect fingerprints and fees. Resolution to authorize the police department to collect fingerprints of persons who neither work nor reside within the town of Groton and to authorize the chief to establish a fee. Therefore, be it resolved that the town council of the town of Groton that A, the employees of the town of Groton Police Department expressly authorized to do so by the chief of police may collect fingerprints of persons who neither work nor <coughs> reside in the town of Groton. In the same manner, employees of the town of Groton Police Department collect fingerprints of persons who do work and or reside in the town, pursuant to the Connecticut General Statutes 29-17C. B, the chief, of, the chief of police department may establish a fee to be charged for a collection of fingerprints of persons who neither work nor reside in the town of Groton. Said fee shall in no case be less than the fee charged by the police department for the collection of fingerprints of persons who reside in or work in the town, but may be in a greater amount sufficient in the judgment of the chief of police to reasonably compensate the police department for the cost of providing these services to persons who do not, who do not reside, somebody forgot the T in that, and or work in town, I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 9 to 0 to 0. <coughs> Karen, can you do, it's on page 7, uh, 0251? Sure. 2017-0251, resolution authorizing the town manager to apply for a national parks and recreation training grant to provide instructor training for an evidence-based fit and strong <coughs> program. Whereas the Senior Center would like to apply for grant funds in the amount of $800 from the National Parks and Recreation Association Instructor Training Program, and whereas funding would be used to provide instructor training for a Senior Center staff member so that the Senior Center can offer a fit and strong program, and whereas the fit and strong program goal is to promote an increase in exercise to continue participant independence. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town manager or his designee is authorized to apply for a National Parks and Recreation training grant in the amount of $800 to support programs at the Groton Senior Center. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing and all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? <laughs> that passes <laughs> 9 to 0 to 0. Harry, you wanted all the reappointments together? Uh, yes. Reappointments. Good. In appointment. Uh, yeah. Well, I think maybe we'll do the appointment separately. Okay. Um, this is a resolution reappointing Laurel Butler to the library board. Um, a resolution reappointing Ann Sloan Rankin to the Harbor Management Commission. And a resolution reappointing Charles Stevens to the Board of Assessments Appeals. Um, I'd like to move all three as a group for reappointment. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 9 to 0 to 0. Okay. Uh, appointment of uh, a resolution appointing Jean-Claude Jean Amoise as an alternate member of the Shellfish Commission. Second. Oh, wait, no, no I'm not, I, I have a question. I, well, I'll come back to it. No. Uh, resolved, uh, hereby appointed alternate member of the Shellfish Commission, term ending 1231-22. I shall move. Now you can say second. Second. Okay. Motion and second discussion. Yeah, I I, I thought it, it was a, a regular member, Betsy. That was, was in our packet last month, and that's, that's what, what I read what I in my minutes too. here. That's right. That's exactly what I thought too. Um, so it, it, well, the thing is, um, I think that the manager's office might have thought that it should have been an alternate, but there wasn't an alternate position available. Oh yeah, there was. There's one alternate and one regular. So Wilson so resigned. And, the intent was definitely at the committee to do with the regular member. Oh, to make the alternate a regular member. To make John Clyde a regular member, for him to take the regular member spot. Isn't that, isn't yeah. that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing here? We, we, we appointed <laughs> a member. You should amend doing. the resolution. Okay, uh, I, I will. Uh, Fix it. <clears throat> I will draw my Remove. motion, Deb. You withdraw my second. Okay, so this is a resolution appointing John Claude Amwaz mm -hmm. as a member of the Shellfish Commission. Uh, resolved that John Claude Amwaz, 169 Channel Gossip Parkway, is hereby appointed as a regular member to the Shellfish Commission for the term ending 1231 22. I so move. Second. We motion is second, Bonnie. <coughs> Are there current 
um, alternate members on the commission? Yeah, because they should probably. Well, you know, the thing is, up. I've talked with the, and so so is Mr. Uh, Councilor Watson. The commissioner, the commission is um, wanting young people as members, and so even though there's alternates that have been alternates for quite some time, all but one. <coughs> Well, I won't, I won't say that, but they want the younger people to be put into the regular position. So the next regular <coughs> position, okay. they're going to put in another younger person in there. Yeah. Uh, by J.C. joining the Shellfish Commission, I think he brings no, no, nothing intended here, but I think he brings the average age of the Shellfish Commission down at least 10 years. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. In the city back there, too. <laughs> okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 9 to 0 to 0. Dean, how about our last one for the we we forever? Slowly. He does nothing. You slow. want me to do the uh, whole Zootopia thing here? The DM no. Okay. <laughs> My knee's going to fall off. So <laughs> 2017 0274. Resolution authorizing the town's insurer to settle an action. Resolved that the town of Groton does hereby provide its consent to the town's insured, tried in public risk, to settle the action entitled Asia Porter versus Richard Carlson et al. Uh, docket number 3, colon, 16, CV 01024. Um, as recommended by defense counsel in that action, I so Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 9 to 0 to 0. Dean? And I should have said something earlier, and I, I'm slow on the uptake. Uh, and anybody else wants to follow my lead? Thank you very much, folks, for supporting me all this time. I don't know what I'll be doing. If I'm dumb, I'll be back. <laughs> and thank you all. Yes. Thank you all for a very wonderful experience. Thank you. Uh, I think the final thing is best of luck to the incoming council. Yes. Best of luck. Best of luck. All right. I'd like to say best of luck because if you succeed, Groton succeeds. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. We are adjourned.